Hi, everybody. This is David Osterloh. Many of you know me because I ran a retail business in Elk City for over 30 years. That's where I learned that if you take care of your customers, they will take care of you. So when it was time to look for a career in real estate, I wanted to land someplace that had the same principles. Western Oklahoma Realty seemed like a natural fit. Putting people before property is the same as taking care of your customers. Since I've been at Western Oklahoma Realty, I've come to understand that is how they do business. People before property is not just a hashtag, it's a way of taking care of customers. When you are looking for your next home, we will find a place that your family can call home. When you are going to sell your current home, we will find a buyer that loves your place as much as you do. Western Oklahoma Realty, where putting people before property is a way of life. Come see us at 602 West 3rd Street. We are in the historic greenhouse on the hill, one block west of Homeland. Or you can check out our website, westernoklamarealty.com, or even call us at 580-225-6271. If you build it, he will look out. It's the City on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be all, end all, know it all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Cow with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Western Oklahoma Realty Monday out there. Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM. The Sports Animal. We're glad to have you along for the next hour. We'll take a look at those college pick em standings with just a couple of weeks left in the contest. Who may be taking home the dough in the Western Oklahoma Realty College pick em? We have a new leader. Big Poppy 10 has been ahead for a few weeks in a row now, it seems like. But we have a new person atop the leaderboard. So we'll say we'll tell you who that is. Oh, you're gonna make us wait. I'm gonna make you wait till we get to the college football I'm, segment I've, right in the middle. That's the one thing I always forget. I mean, I, for, I always make the picks, then I always forget to check how they win. So I'm gonna go ahead and do. You this. were you got half this time. I've you been doing see. so. I went five and five. Yep. I've been doing that like the. I've just been five hundred all for like. <laughs> Four weeks you in a row. Yeah, the, the four weeks it shows, like the last four. Yeah. You got two fives, a six, and a four. So that evens out to it all, 500. Yeah. Whatever. Still a pretty big race. Who, who messed me up? Still a good race here. Michigan messed me up. I thought they'd cover that. Yeah. I'm seeing them now. I don't know. Man, oh, man, I really James, I did James Madison. Come on, man. Looks like they drank the game day Kool Aid. Man, Liberty didn't. They were killing that. <laughs> the, the spreads, man. The, the couple of those spreads got me. The one time I trusted I Mizzou thought, all year yep, long, me and too. it didn't happen. Me too. Easy pick for LSU. I actually thought, and I said it on there. Thought Iowa State. I thought Texas would win, but they they they're at the end. Got got ten on them. All right, we'll hit the college football in the middle. We'll hit some thunder at the end of the show. Man alive, how good are they? Fun to watch, that's for sure. Been a crazy game on Saturday. Chet sending it into overtime with the three there at the buzzer. After you know who's one of the biggest thunder killers of all time. Uh, Curry, uh, no, who? Uh, Andrew Wiggins. Wiggins, yeah. Sorry. I he, I yep. personally was at a game when he played in Minnesota that Paul George hit a three to go up like one or two. They didn't have a timeout, so they couldn't move it to the half line, so they had to throw it in in the backcourt, and he made one from just inside the half-court line, banked it in to win. And he's, he always plays well against the Thunder. And he almost had another game almost, winner yeah. against OKC on Saturday night for Chet. Well, yeah, you know, they didn't have then and who we have now. One Chet Holmgren. Chet. He drained the three and then SGA absolutely took over in overtime. So we'll hit Thunder at the end of the show. Kind of just some just talk about where they're at. 
the way the, way the West is look, kind of starting to shape up. I mean, it's still extremely early. But a lot of people thought these first 12 games were a, a really rough stretch first, and Oklahoma City has navigated that extremely well. College football weekend, the Sooners sneak out of Provo with a win. Oklahoma State played awesome in the second half. They just dominated Houston in the second half to set themselves up in a great position this week. Uh, what are the Big 12 championship game scenarios? There, a bunch of them are, have kind of fallen by the wayside. There's, there's really only a few that matter now. Is Lincoln Riley on the hot, sheet, hot seat? Did you see the uh, article that Bill Plaschke wrote in the L.A. Times? No, I did. Holy I read that Moses, yesterday. I did too. That's the second one he's written about Lincoln Riley that just, just th- th- rakes him across the coals. Yeah, and he, he called for Chip Kelly to be fired last week. Didn't quite get there, but he was close. And then here's a question. I've been hearing basically all year long that that college football is moving to this era era of parody. Okay? Well, to me, then I don't understand where the upsets are. And all these years of non-parody, there's always massive up. Right, yeah. I think I heard there's only been two teams ranked in the top ten that have been beaten once the college football playoff rankings have come out. OU and Ole Miss. Right. And maybe, maybe Penn State. Anyway, well, That but the, wouldn't surprise me. But the whole deal is there hasn't been – and they may have lost to Ohio State before the rankings and never were in the top ten. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that for that one. Mm-hmm. But we always see these massive earth shattering upsets that change the complexion of the whole season. Where are they? I haven't seen them. Still waiting. Thought Oregon State might be able to do it. Nope. Not quite. So I think that's an interesting thing. That's why I always say when even when we get to this expanded playoff system we're still going to see these top four maybe five teams that are always there right i mean you uh, you I but guess. there's always going to be that opportunity for them to lose but <clears throat> at the end of the day i mean, I mean it's not the see... same ones right now no it's a couple of the same ones. i mean michigan's I mean, starting to be starting one to of those perennial up there mm-hmm. but there's ohio state there's georgia there's alabama in the mix anyways But yeah, I see what you're saying. We're we're waiting for those massive upsets yeah. to to really. And I had this thought over the weekend. I mean, we still have the chance. We we still have the chance to just have four undefeated. Yeah. How boring would that be? Uh, yeah. Or do we? With what happened this weekend with Florida State, we'll talk about that too. Oh yeah, oh, Jordan man. Travis. That, and that, how you know we've seen this in the past in the basketball tournament, where huge injuries have affected seeding big time. Mm-hmm. If, if you're looking at the entirety of the resume and the entirety of the season, I think these next, these next couple of games for Florida State are humongous for them to be able to at least to prove that they still belong without a Heisman candidate and in, in Jordan Travis. I don't know if they're going to be able to. I mean, as, as bad as it stinks for Florida State, that has to be taken into account, right? Sure it does. I think I think it has to be, and maybe tomorrow we'll see how much that is going to be the case when when the new rankings come out. High school football playoffs. We'll hit, touch on that at the top of the show. High school basketball as well. Uh, man, West Side of the State four A. Ouch. Oh yeah. They're... Ouchies. Yep. You I think p- a lot of us saw that one coming. Power was in the East. Yep. This year. No doubt about it. 225-9698 is the phone of the text line. 225-9698. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. We've talked about any of those things. Whatever else might be on your mind, feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area one of these days, you want to stay in touch with the show, it's easy to do. Log on to kadsam.com. Hit the play button. Bam. You can live stream the show that way. Or you can download the app. The app's got it all. It's got the radio stations. It's got the penny news. And it's also got Big Elk and Paragon TV where you can see all kinds of college or uh, high school hoops, excuse me, 
throughout the entirety of the high school basketball season. And then the Skinny on Sports podcast, if you missed the show entirely, you can go back and listen to any of those episodes as well. How was your weekend, Jared? Uh, pretty busy. Pretty good, though. How was yours? Kind of, uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't It was. It was very busy. Didn't do really anything on Friday. Just kind of hung out and watched TV. Then on Saturday, um, one of our most loyal listeners, Joe, Joe Wynn. Oh, Joe. His 50th wedding anniversary party out at the golf course. That's great. So we attended that. It was a really fun time. Got to see you. It was an eclectic mix of folks. <laughs> so, you know, you, like people from different towns and places all yeah. gathering together at oh, once. Yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun. And then yesterday, spent a bunch of time. Our couch was trying to fly up, so I was holding it down. You know, just it's sitting there holding the couch oh, down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it, I don't know what its deal was. Well, man, I should have called you if you had nothing to do. I had put up Christmas lights on the house yesterday. Oh yeah, I I'm, think I'm paying for it now. I think I'm fighting off a cold. When we, uh, when we got, when when we were leaving the house to go to church yesterday, one of our neighbors was in the process of doing the Christmas lights, and I asked my wife, "So, are we gonna put up <laughs> Christmas lights?" You know, we've got one of those, one of those, like, big lights that you, like, project onto the house. Right. We've got one of those. Is that enough? I mean, you know, we're I've, like we're like I've, the new people in the neighborhood. Yeah. And so, are, do we want to be the ones that, you know, everybody else has got their house lit up nice and bright and there's just a black hole there where our <laughs> house is? Do we want to be those people? I think you need to ask your neighbors that question. Do I really want to get up on top of the house and put lights on? Yeah, so I can tell you the answer to that is no. No, I, that is not my favorite thing to do. It is not. I try to limit it as much as I can, and I only got up on the house three times because there's pitches on my house that I mm -hmm. have to. The rest I can do from a ladder and just attach yeah. it to the gutters, but I have to get up there. And that, I'm not a heights guy. So no, I'm not either. So that, And then, you know, the weather wasn't great in... My wife's going to be a hard time. You should have done it Saturday. It's like, when did I have time Saturday? One, I like to reserve. I didn't watch a lot of OU games live this year. And yesterday, or was Saturday was an opportunity for me to do that. Did that. Then right after that, we had family, Christmas family photos, little photo thing over at Burns Flat. Did that. Come back. Had like an hour to spare. And then my daughter, Katie, had an art showcase downtown here. So that was my day Saturday. I had no time to get up on the house to do lights. So I told her, I'll do it Sunday, because we don't have a lot of weekends where we're just home. So I'll do it Sunday. Well, then the weather came in, and look, so I'm, I am I got it done. And I had a nightmare last night that my wife said, the lights aren't working. <laughs> <laughs> I did the thing, though, where you, you plug them in before oh, yeah. you he take had, them. I mean, you can't. I didn't want to be Clark Griswold and freak out in the front <laughs> lawn trying to get them on. A, I, <laughs> so it, when I asked Kara that question, as we were pulling out to go to church, I, I, my first thought was, if she says yes, and I was looking kind of at the gutter to see if there was a way, if it gets cold, that I could shoot ice through somebody's window and break something, like in Christmas oh, yeah. vacation. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm afraid there might be. Uh, Listen, we're, I had we're, we're, yeah. it's a long way though. Yeah, it's not quite as close as what Clark had. I had visions when I'm up on the roof of me sliding down thinking what do i do well grab onto the gutter well then i just had vision of that scene mm -hmm. in in that movie <laughs> griswold just holding on to that gutter at least it slows you slows the fall down uh, yeah just a little bit. i mean i that's i kept thinking okay if i fall do i tuck and roll do i <laughs> aim for what what's Bush the least <laughs> least painful part of my body that i should fall on <laughs> number one protect your head maybe crack a rib <laughs> it was, uh, it was just uh, not fun for me but it is done. And then it got dark. I go, hey, Katie, should you head on outside, check out the Christmas lights? Oh, yeah. She loves the idea of that. So she runs outside. She, this is, and I'm quoting her. She goes, well, they're not perfect, but they look good. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm going inside. Is it is it a possibility that she might be her mother's child? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> uh, and you just talk about neighbors. We'll end on this note. We talk about neighbors. We've got great neighbors that do the lights. And, and they are they have we don't have the big bulb lights. They're just a string of small multicolor lights. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that. But they have the the neighbors have the big bulb yeah. lights, and they're all you know straight, right? They just don't hang; they're straight. I think that's what she meant. She and my wife has even said, "Well, how come they're not straight? How come you can't get it?" I'm like, what? So I blame. I I love my neighbors, but um, one of them, Jeremy G. I'm gonna get on to you because yeah. she has quoted your house. She's well, their house. It looks. Oh, it drives me crazy. Like we're not keeping up with the Joneses here. You know, there's times where I really get fired up thinking about decorating, like go all out. Like yeah, far. yeah, yeah. And then that passes pretty quickly. <laughs> I yeah. prefer to stay on the ground to decorate. Yeah, I have no problem with decorating. Yeah, because getting can, on the house. A bun- is, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of spots where I would have to get up on the house. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's not a it's not a fun gig. And I've even tried to. I've gotten quotes on, you know, you can hire people to have a lighting so you just rent the lights. They put them up and mm-hmm. then they take them back. It's not, it's a whew, little pricey. But they've cornered the market in that stuff, for sure. Yeah, and then you always always think, okay, I'll do it next year. So come like January or February when all the lights are way discounted cheaper, yeah. and way cheaper. Yep. yep. Then you forget. I'm thinking maybe just another light. Have one theme on like the front of the house and one theme on the side of the house. There you with go. The light. Yeah. Try to make them cool together. I don't know. Yep. We got, got the tree up and everything. What? Yeah. Oh my. That that was Allie's contribution. I was outside doing that. She was inside and she put the tree up by herself, fluffed it out and everything. It's not Thanksgiving. Doesn't That's matter. what Katie was yelling. She was like, What are we doing? Thanksgiving's Thursday. So that's where she's my child because she's the same way. We'll drive through town or drive and she'll see someone with Christmas lights on and she it bugs her because she's more of a structured, you know, it, and I'm with her. And I told Alice, like, listen, can we wait till Friday? We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything. Nope. Had to get it done this weekend. Well, it's going to be a lot colder this coming weekend. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, you, as much as I'll poke fun, you are really kind of – subjected to certain days you can do it because of the weather that and basketball things going on, yeah. things going on with the kids and where they got to be so Allie was right there's not a lot of weekends where we're just at home even on Sundays so yesterday is one of those days so it's probably worth taking getting it done yeah that's this is the conundrum that I'm facing well, good luck with that. Good news is I'll probably get to go to Walmart again for the third day in a row at some point today. So uh, there are great clips. You got gutters? Slip by, yeah. Do Dang. you have the clips for the gutter? There's they just snap on. Yeah, and they're they're re- and it makes it easy. The hardest part again is just getting on the roof when you have to go up to those pitches. Yeah, and I don't even know if I can get to the top of that one. No, I did not go hunting on the text line. I did not. Anybody shooting deer? Oh man, Facebook was. And it was cool. The best part is seeing the little ones, the little kids, bag their first deer. Wyatt said he saw a big deer, but he didn't get a chance to shoot it. He went? Mm-hmm. Good. I was wondering how he was feeling. He got his stitches out last night. Very good. Shout out to Kim. Very good. Yeah, he looks way better. He's still having trouble with bees and... Talking peas, yeah, because his lips Cause are still so his swollen. Lips are swollen up. <laughs> it's hard to poor guy make those. A uh, lot of uh, yogurt and ice cream, and yeah, he's over it. He was over it pretty quick. Yeah, like mashed potatoes. Turns out, maybe he doesn't like mashed potatoes as much as he thought. <laughs> when that's all he got to eat for like four days. There's some noodles. I think he's gonna go to basketball practice today. That ought to be interesting. Well, you got a face guard thing. No, like that's Hamilton. what we, J Mac <laughs> when he was there last night. We were talking about that. Getting one of those clear face masks. Yeah. Right? I mean, what? But what's there left to hurt? Can't injure it anywhere. Well, I just <laughs> mean he's just can't. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, it, he doesn't have his stitches in anymore. So, you know. Yeah. I think we're kind of. Is he? Is it tender? I mean, the stitches are out, but it's still probably... I you know, no the idea. thing is, here's the real test. Is he going to be able to ride a bike again? You know I mean? Is he going to get he's over He's already that? talking about like, it. Like, man, he's not going to be scared of it. 
He's maybe, already, maybe not go down that hill again. Yeah, he said he's gonna. There's a, we're gonna have to take a new route to go to the uh, to the trails back there. Yeah, but he's he was talking about last night. We're good. Problem is, he's gonna have to figure out where his bike is and how broke it is. We still haven't. I think it's over at Rusty still. We just haven't went <laughs> and got it. You can't find the bike. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in the evidence room. So. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe locked up in the club somewhere. Yeah. In case. <laughs> it got impounded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, heavens. Now, we'll see what happens. His hand's still pretty much. I don't. Anyway, he wants to go to basketball practice, so he's going to get to. Oh, good. At 11 o'clock. So if I go rushing out of here about 11 10, everybody will know where I'm headed. <laughs> Middle school gym. <laughs> something Something is amiss. Uh, high school football playoffs Friday night. Uh, 4A1 is officially done. After <clears throat> Clinton beat or Clinton lost to Ada, excuse me, twenty-one to nine, the game started out with a bang. I mean, Ada was just ahead the whole game. You know, um, opening kickoff run, ran back what eighty-six yards, I think, for a touchdown. Clinton up or Ada up seven nothing. Clinton had their chances toward the end, <clears throat> blocked a punt, and you know they they just couldn't generate enough offense in order to come back and defeat the Ada Cougars. Just couldn't do it. Uh, so the the last team from 4A1, the 4A1 champ, bows out at home, 21-9. Did you watch? I, I watched Well, you know, I it. was over in Hydro. Oh, that's right, um, your basketball. I was following on my phone. I saw 7-0 and 7-7. I thought, well, that, that might be the way it's going to go, just trading touchdowns. And then um, it made, when it was like 21-7, Ada, and then it made like 21-9, sometime in the fourth quarter I thought well there might be a shot here but no I didn't follow a lot but I had a feeling I had a feeling it seemed like Clinton was kind of playing with fire all season long in in some regard and um and you know and Ada had my eye on them at the very beginning of the year the way they you know went through their uh district and um had played undefeated football up until Poto and then but still held you know still won those games after that so um, had a feeling that might have been the outcome, but it being in the Tornado Bowl, you never know. So, I uh, just didn't go Clinton's way. Yeah, and I, I think district wide, this season you saw there just there wasn't enough firepower offensively for any for anybody. You know what I mean? It, it just wasn't just wasn't good, wasn't good enough. Yeah, Clinton leaned on their defense a lot this mm-hmm. year. I think they had Weatherford spurts did, of really yeah. good offense, but they would lean on their defense, and that's good. I mean, you, when you have a really good defense, you're gonna have a shot to win almost every game. Um, but if, but if that the problem with that is if you get behind, and you don't have enough offense, I mean, you, holding someone to 21 points isn't a bad. Mm-hmm. You got to score 28 or 24. You know, you got to you got to produce offense. Well, and I, and I don't think it was that much of a surprise here or in Weatherford. Just because of breaking in a new quarterback, mm-hmm. whereas you know that was the the one upper hand that Clinton always had was Sully coming back for his second year, but it just it, no nobody ever really got two dimensional. That makes sense. Yeah, you know Weatherford could kind of throw it, but could they run it enough? You know the Elks could run it, but could they throw it enough? Clinton's exact same way; they could run it, but could they throw it enough? And they're just it, it turned out no when when, when you needed. To make a play through the air for for Elk City and, and Clinton, especially in those in those playoff losses, it just wasn't quite there, you know. And that's something that looking forward to next year, we'll we'll probably I mean we'll have to improve because you know it's it's one thing, you know, if you have the, the offensive line that that Elk City had last year and the year you know you lose you lose lose a few guys here and there, and all of a sudden it's not quite as easy to just only run the ball, right? I mean, as, as kids graduate and new kids fill in and they're kind of at different times of of their of their careers you know it just there's their their ability to do both just wasn't there for for those two schools and i think it's a big part of of why they bowed out so you look at the semifinals ada and wagner that's another one of those name games right just like ada clinton was you hear ada you hear wagner that's that's as good as it gets almost in high school football in Oklahoma. But I think the better game is the, is the other one with Blanchard and Poto. You know, Newcastle was up early down at Poto. And then coming out of the end of the second half, they just got behind it, couldn't catch up. And Poto beat them 28-14. to 
Blanchard and Salisaw was an absolute score fest, 55 to 28. Blanchard was pretty far ahead in that game when I was looking on it in the entirety of the night. They weren't really in any chance, any any way, shape, or form in a place to lose that game. It didn't ever feel like. No. But uh, I think you know Blanchard Poto in that semifinal at Catusa, to me anyway, but with what with what Wagner's been doing, that's the game. Yeah. And then can yeah. we see a situation like we saw a year ago, except this time Wagner's going to be the heavy favorite, and can somebody trip them up in the finals the way they did Cushing a year ago? Well, I think we've all thought the team that could actually do that is Poto. Um, I'm still hanging my hat on a little bit on that dark horse of Blanchard, so my rooting interest would be probably for Blanchard just because I want to look smart. But I think at the end of the day, we all think this is going to be a Wagner-Poto ordeal come that Thursday of uh, next week, right? I, it just feels it, like It that. seems like they've been on a collision course the entire year. It really does. It, it just feels that way. That those two are, are and I and I want that because I think if anyone's going to give Wagner a game I, or, or could challenge Wagner, no offense to the others, but I think Poto's the team that can do it. To me, there's a lot of people who thought that way. They vote in the AP voting anyways. There's a lot of people that they would switch spots one two one two uh, on any given week. So that's the matchup I kind of hope to see because for just we might get a good game and could challenge Wagner, but um. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see Blanchard do a little Cinderella thing here. But, uh, yeah, it just feels like those two teams have been on a collision course all season long. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy to think that – but it does feel that way. But Cinderella could be number three all year. I mean, that's kind of where Blanchard's been, right? Yeah. You know, just But it's always seemed kind of like, a, a little yeah, step behind those top two. It's like there's tiers here, you mm-hmm. know, and the top tier has been Wagner, Poto, and then, then of course, Blanchard and you know, maybe Ada and Tuttle, and then, then underneath that – and throw it in but yeah it just those two teams are are really really good for for good reason now it's gonna head now, to Poto five feels like they 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 want that Wagner matchup because I think they felt like we listened to that game um they just can never get the ball Wagner just took like all of the third quarter and ran it down their throats yeah. and in but it's like Poto cannot find that break or find that momentum Wagner never gave it to him yeah and a year ago what was it tied maybe at halftime or maybe yeah, Poto yeah. had a small lead and then yeah, Wagner takes the kickoff in the third quarter, and it's like a 10-minute drive for I a mean, touchdown, yeah. and then they immediately stopped him or maybe a turnover and got it again. And at that point, it was like, man. There's just no time. You go up, yeah. you, you go up 10 points with 10 minutes left. Yeah, th- this game is over. And it, right. ended up, it ended up even getting more out of hand than that by the time it was all said and done. So, yeah, that, they got that revenge. The revenge is definitely on the Poto side. I, one and we just got a text about this, and the answer is yes. Maybe not who won, but by the amount of points, I thought one of the most shocking or surprising results on Friday night was in five A, and it was Dell City just absolutely hammering Guthrie, forty-seven to fourteen. Nobody, Carl Albert included, had been able to do anything of the sort like that, to Guthrie. That Guthrie defense has been, I mean, rock solid. What uh, Carl Albert put 24 on the board against the Blue Jays. Nobody else uh, had gotten into double digits in the regular season. Then McCar- uh, Lawton Mack had 21 in a big-time loss last week. But now Dell City 47-14. to and it looks uh, it looks like 5A is on the same collision course that 4A is with Carl Albert and Dell City, and that may be one heck of a game. Uh, the one score that I had to double-check make sure it was the right score that caught my eye outside of that one in 5A was uh, Elgin. Elgin uh, Claremore. 7-6. to 7-6. Mm-hmm. Where'd the offense go, Elgin? I know. And Elgin had been that sleeper team for me in, like, in, in the entire state just because there was so much attention on Carl Albert. And and rightfully so. We saw them with our own, our own eyes. We saw what they're capable of doing and the talent that they have. But then you also heard that team, the Carl Out, talk about how they how Elgin was a team that they had messed around with in the summertime at some of the camps, and that had really kind of put it on them. Now whether or not that could happen in a state final, so I, I'll believe it when I see it. Maybe, but 
They were Elgin was a team that it felt like was being slept on, right? Mm-hmm. Almost almost the Blanchard of five A in some ways, with with everyone paying so much attention to Dell City and Carl Albert. They were a team I thought was absolutely going to play Dell City next week, and then we'll see what happened. But Claremore got them seven to six, and so the Owls best season since like nineteen eighty six. They hadn't won a district t- title since eighty six. Um, they fall they they fall short of certainly what I thought they might do. In the, in the playoffs, and that was a semifinal appearance against Dell City, and then we'll see who gets to play Carl Albert. But, uh, yeah, it's <clears> – <throat> it may just be those two, and that could be a whale of a game. Yeah. A really, really great game. Yep. A ton of athletes would be on the field for that oh one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of people. Uh, you remember those – a couple of those brothers that played at Southeast last time we were there? Fields? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're both – Going to OSU and playing at Dell City. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be good. High school football playoffs. You always want to play on Turkey Day. Mm-hmm. We'll be back. We were sitting around the office one day and tried to explain what Western Oklahoma Realty was. If you had to put it in a dictionary, what would you get? What kind of definition you would get? I think I said, is a, what about, were people before property? People before property means to me that you care about the person more than you care about what they're buying in that you want them to get the best thing for their circumstances, the best home, the best investment. For all your real estate needs, give Western Oklahoma Realty a call at 225-6271. The Skinny on Sports. Just a bit outside. Welcome back. It's the Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal hanging out here on a Western Oklahoma Realty Monday. Take a look at the college pick'em results so far. The Western Oklahoma Realty College pick'em down to two weeks. And we have a barn burner at the top. Get back there. Da, 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 da. What happened? Oh. College pick and froze, Jared. Froze on you? It froze up. It froze. I can't get back to the top. All right, let me the leaderboard. Here it goes. Now there we go. All right, you got it? <clears throat> yeah, so we got TJ's picks. TJ's picks is number one. 71 and 49. Then we got a three-way tie for second. Big Poppy, who had been leading this thing for a while now, is down into second. a three-way tie for second with Traber and also Farmer Mark. The St. Louis Soup Company and A.C. O'Brien. Another game back. Andy Peffer there at 10th. You're down at, uh, where were you? I saw you earlier. 13. 13. 65 and 55. 10 over 500. It's been some good picking going on. I haven't done so well the last couple of weeks. I've drawn I've dropped all the way down to 70th. Out of the running. No chance to catch up. At the bottom, our man Paul has hung in there all year long. Oh no, did he forget to pick? Uh-oh. Oh no. Got to pick. Oh, no. I think he did. Are we at 120? Uh, Games picked? 71 and 49. Yeah, that's 120. Oh, no. Oh, darn. Paul, he forgot to pick. So now we're going to have to look up the list. Vinny Della is the new leader at 50 and 70. 50 and 70. Uh-oh, I'm closer to the bottom than I am the top all of a sudden. 56 and 64. There's a bunch of us. 56 and 64s. 55 and 25. Man, he's got a five, he's got a five-game lead. Vinny Della. Paul had a six-game lead. Oh. What a crusher. What a crusher. Anyhow, it's coming down to the winer in the uh, Western Oklahoma Realty College pick 'em. It's pretty good that eight over five, eight under five hundred is like at the very, very bottom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of people know their. That's pretty good. college football. I for mean, sure. I'd have thought somebody would have been way further than that. Hmm. I appreciate Tyler and Robbie and all the gang 
at Western Oklahoma Realty. People before property is their motto. All their in, all your uh, real estate needs. Two two five six two seven one is their phone number. All right, college football this weekend, Jared. Sooners sneak out of Provo, Utah, with a thirty-one to twenty-four win. Tons of things happen, but this might have been if if things go right this coming week. Not only in Norman, but in some other locations to allow the Sooners to play in the Big 12 title game. This here might be the play that really saved that part of the season. What? Picked off! Intercepted! Billy Bowman! He's going down the sidelines! Billy Bowman to the 40! To the 30! He's running out of gas! He's at the 10! He's at the 5! Unhitch it! All the way! Coast to coast! Billy Bowman took it the distance! Billy Bowman, 100-yard interception return for a touchdown. That obviously was the voice of the Sooners, Toby Rowland. Have you? I you, want to hear the. You want to hear the Spanish one? That was. That I've got was it. So exciting. I've got it right here, queued up. En la dos oficialmente. Primer y gol. Misma jugada. Dispara a Snell. Esquina. Pick six. Interceptado. Banda derecha la 30. 35 a 40. Media cancha. Se va. Billy. 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 Billy Bowman. La cancha en la 10. Entra. Touchdown. Touchdown, touchdown Oklahoma, pick six, 99 yardas. It's that, Enrique and Luis that is on awesome. the Los Sooners. He channel. knew it too as soon as Billy He literally got said it. pick six. He knew because he knew. He knew there's there's nobody between him and the goal line. That was all. And Billy, 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 that yeah. was so cool. That, has, there, has there ever been a more obvious um, example of not used to the altitude? Then watching Billy Bowman almost get run down by the quarterback from the thirty. <laughs> I asked him. He asked. He was asked about that. I I I don't know the quote exactly, but he said, "Yeah, you, you all of a sudden you're tired, then you're up again, then you're tired again." Yeah, that alt- altitude has something to do. Yeah, with. Just, yeah, in that run, he was like, he got to the thirty, and, and somebody put cement on his shoes. And I wondered, did he just think he he was going to be able to jog in, but. No, I think it, it was... It looked like he was trying still. He was still it trying. just kind of yeah. ran out of steam. No, that's crazy. crazy. Lots of things he happened. He read that perfectly. Apparently, he was supposed to blitz. He yeah. he called his own audible and said, I'm not blitzing. This guy's going to be wide open. Yeah, he, there was confusion between him and McCullough as the ball was being snapped. I, I'll be honest with you, and I, and I was texting some different people as the game was going on. BYU, their offensive coordinator did a really, really good job except for the fact that him calling play uh, pass plays in the second half was the dumbest thing he ever could have done. Yeah. Because, think about the, the the only two real negative plays BYU had offensively in the entire second half. They tried to throw it on the goal line instead of they, – they mar- I mean, it was like Chuck Long against LSU in 2003. Yeah. yeah. Run it all the way down the field just to throw it. Right. And they, they try to sneak one in the end zone, and it goes back the other way. Not only was it, it, was it a bad play call – it was just disaster results because it led to a touchdown the other way for the Sooners. And then the strip sack by, by Stutzman later on. You know, the, it, it felt like BYU dominated the line of scrimmage on offense especially. Yeah. And the, the, few, the couple of times they didn't, it was because they weren't asked to just go plow somebody over. Right. I mean, the, the run blocking, the – you know the, the a joke that we've said, guys I watch games with or text back and forth with over the last, I don't know, since Lincoln for sure, if not even a little bit before that, was does Oklahoma have linebackers? Mm. You know, that's that joke's kind of gone away until that game right there. And then it was all of a sudden, man, where are the linebackers? You don't even see them on those run plays because BYU's into the secondary before you before even realize what's yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. And for them – if you're doing a show at Provo this morning, you've got to be questioning the play calling of just not just continuing to run it down OU's throat because they clearly had the ability to do that on Saturday. Right, which is crazy because of that field conditions. and But they didn't have to do a lot of juking. They were just going – That's it. They, they were just running they, straight lines. They were going straight – yeah, straight up. Or, or everything would get sucked in and they were able to get the edge easily. Yeah, was, the play calling was questionable. That's that's odd. You're, and, and, you know, and I – in their defense, are probably thinking they they think we're gonna run, so we're gonna step back here and throw it. But resulted in that pick six, then the strip sack, and all that stuff. So, 
whatever. I mean, that's. I mean, it just looked to me know, like they could a, tell them. They, they looked to me like they could say, we're going to run it right there. I know you could do nothing nah, about it. No, nah, they were getting their butts whipped up front mm-hmm. 100%. And then and then linebackers, from what I was told and I saw a little bit, just they weren't hitting the right gaps. Where the, You know what I mean? They weren't. It just uh, was not a good uh, defensive outing against the run for sure. But defense did what they had to do, though. They they got yeah. the three turnovers, and one obviously resulted in the pick six, and um, the other one led towards to the go ahead touchdown. So, you know, a little bend don't break, I guess. Um, um, you know, I was real worried actually about the secondary and the passing because in pregame hearing about everyone that was out, uh, in the Vickers was out. I mean, there's others I can't remember off the top of my head. Just listening to the pregame show uh, on Cool ninety four and. Oh, man, if they want to throw it on us, they might have some, some some success there. And they had some. They had some. They did have some, but that was that was always the the backbreaker. It was as as well as the quarterback played at times. He also mishandled the snap for a fumble in the first half. Obviously, through the pick six, and then you know you get strip sacked. Maybe your awareness of the little lacking, or you hold on to the ball too long, whatever that is. But it's still every turnover. Was was Rhett's loss fault? I mean, he was yeah. the one that turned the well, ball over three times. He's their number two guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that. Listen, I I've been very vocal about this game as one of those I was really worried about. So at the end of the day, I was just happy. Oh, you got out there with the win, got out with the win, because going to Provo, uh, I've seen some good teams lose there. Um, then I I kind of failed to realize this until the game actually started. They're playing to get bowl eligible. You know, it was their senior day. There's a lot of things that would have gone against OU uh, momentum wise. So, and then you know we've said this before. Oh oh, and the weather. The weather was not was not good. I mean, I'm looking at that game thinking, man, is this Lawrence? Is this Lawrence Kansas from a few weeks ago? Just seems like the same scenario. But um, we've said this before. You know, there are games this year that OU would have lost. Last year, that's a game they would have lost last year. Hundred percent, and that's a sign where this team they've took you know they're they're moving forward under Venables and staff and the and the mentality and and the never give up or whatever you want to call it. So again, I was just happy as an OU fan that Sooners were able to get out of Provo with the win, keeps their Big Twelve title hopes alive. We'll see what happens third or Friday and what happens after that, but. Uh, is what it is. Maybe they can get healthier. Um, I was kind of wondering about Stutzman, and he played. And of course, he had the big strip sack. Now, question is Dylan Gabriel. Um, I thought when he got tackled and his head hit the turf, that didn't look good, and turned out it wasn't. Jackson Arnold, I think. What do you think? I mean, made some quality throws. Couple the, there, but the one obviously to Farouk to see. I mean, that was a humongous throw. Yeah. And, and apparently, he audible to that play. Which I've heard that sealed the game. Yeah, that one, and yeah. I've heard that that Gabriel doesn't have that ability. He doesn't heard, have free reign. To I have heard that from people that would know. Wow. So for the fact that that Levy would give him that ability, or does maybe he just did it? That shows you something. If you know, if a, what six year guy can't do it or isn't allowed to do it, and then you know you're setting in there for your first real meaningful snaps in your career. On the biggest play of the game, and and you do that, that that shows something. I just, you know, he didn't turn it over. He didn't do anything spectacular. He had the one chance on a great play call from Levy after the Sooners took the lead, and then the play action. Nick Anderson was ten yards open, and he just overthrew it, which was crazy to see a deep ball overthrown. hadn't seen that all year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. when you go, oh man, at least Gabriel completes that one for fifty. It may not be the touchdown. That it could have been with Arnold's arm we'll getting blame it out altitude. there. Let's just blame altitude. Well, just you know, th- those are floated. those are throws that yeah that have to be made. That wasn't, and and you know, you look at his stat line: five of nine for thirty-three yards, no touchdowns, no picks. You complete that one for what seventy-five or eighty. All of a sudden, yeah, you know, you're you're six of six of nine for a hundred and three and a touchdown. It makes it look you know a lot better. I just think that. And you're put in that situation. He didn't turn it over. He, you know, the the one run right off the bat that Stogner blocked a guy in the back for no reason that would have been a first down to kind of yeah. kind of gain a little bit of trust and 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 field position more importantly because the first two times he had it, the Sooners started you know with their own ten and own twelve or something like that, and they're being extra careful. 
with a young guy to not turn it over, and he makes the long. He makes a great run. Going to have a first down for sure without a block in the back, and then he does that, and you're like, ah, you know. The, I think there's things that he'll look back. I, Gabriel's an interesting thing because this week it's it's a it's a short week playing on Friday. Yeah, we've seen this happen to Dylan Gabriel before, and he did not return the next week. Nope, he couldn't clear the protocols. So, you know, that's it's a story to watch for sure, and in. You know, whatever the bowl game is coming up or a Big 12 title game possibility, I don't think that Dylan Gabriel, that was his last snap, but it could be. Yeah. Especially in the situation where the Sooners don't go to the Big 12 title game. Does he just kind of, you know, right. done? Right. And start preparing for the draft? I don't know. That that's a lot of questions up in the air. You wish this was a, a normal game week, but it is a short week. Venables has said he'll be good to go, but that's more or less coach speak, just to keep everybody happy. But uh, but the difference is, I mean, between last year and this year, if you don't have him, at least you got that guy that that freshman that looks light years ahead than what a normal freshman would be. So there is you can take some solace in that and think, okay, the the next the next era of OU quarterback could start on Friday night. Or did it start in Provo? We'll see. Yeah, what Friday, and it, it's eleven. Friday, o'clock. a Friday morning. Yeah, I did what, it again. I keep but thinking that's, it's Friday night. But that's another thing that you know, those hours. Yeah, and it's it, it, with a concu- you know some of that actually matters. You know what I'm saying? Like to be able to clear those protocols and in a timely fashion, it may even be different because that game's at eleven. Uh, well, de- I might be nitpicking before we move on though. OSU. just I need your thoughts on the the field conditions. Field was atrocious. Is that not embarrassing? It was absolutely. I just kept atrocious. thinking this is embarrassing. If this is my university, I'm embarrassed. It, it 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 was, it was like an ice rink out there. It was a little bit like you know back in the day, maybe in South Bend they would grow the grass up taller to slow down fast teams that uh-huh. came into Notre Dame. It was sort of like that, except for it was more. It, I I don't know that I've ever seen guys going in motion, falling down. Right. And that happened numerous times on both sides. And and for that to be the very first lead-in of the game, when they actually went to the stadium, and Lewis Riddick, immediate, the very first comment he made was, watch out for the field. And then they show, they kept on showing the clips of last week in last Iowa State. Week. So it's and, not and like this dude, is a new thing. Yeah, but, I mean, you can't do nothing about it in a week. That's the problem. I, I understand. And, and they did mention that it's set to be redone for next year, so maybe this was just one of those, you know, the, the kind of just – at the end of the season, it was just a bad break. But, yeah, they tarped it. I don't understand the tarp. I tried to trick the grass into thinking it was warmer. I, I, anyway, it was bad. It's uh, it, it's something that, you know, as much as I agree, grass field, grass field, grass field instead of turf, this is a reason why you don't. <laughs> Watching that is a giant reason why, every, like, why love, people go to turf. I know we don't. You follow him on Twitter, and he's a great follow, the, the – what do you call him? Turf manager, yeah, field manager OU. at OU, who's done a phenomenal – to the point he'll do stuff, put pictures on it on social media, and people question if it's even real grass. And then, No, no, that has to be turf, right? But I would want – I would like to pick his brain or someone like him and go, how do you fix that? You know, in those conditions, you have a week to prepare for it. Do you cut it short? I mean, how do you, how do you fix that? I don't how think do it sh- was fixable from a week. It, that, that's the point. It is what it is at this it, right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there is a fix until they can redo well. it after, guess you know after Saturday. Uh, down in Houston, Oklahoma State keeps their Big Twelve title game hopes alive with a dominant second half, twenty four to seven in the second half to win forty three to thirty. Pokes struggled around in the first half for a bunch of it. Um, oh man, when it started out seven nothing. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, it was fourteen three. It's just but they got the running. Unlike last week. They got the running game on track, and Ollie Gordon ends up with 164 on 25 carries, scored three times, and Bowman didn't continue to turn the ball over. He kind of settled in, which I think that goes so hand-in-hand with OSU. They complement each other so well that when when Ollie can run the ball like he has outside of that UCF game here in the in, in the Big 12 conference schedule for sure, that, that allows things to be so much more easy for Bowman, throwing the mm-hmm. football. Obviously, Brennan Presley had a humongous game with 15 catches, 189 yards. Gordon scored the three. Bowman threw a couple of touchdowns. 
and it, it just the, the you could see the complimentary football offensively yeah. for Oklahoma State just shine through in that second half. And uh, now you look up, and the Pokes control everything. Yep. If if Texas wins, and if Oklahoma State wins, it doesn't matter what Kansas State and Oklahoma do. It doesn't matter right. because it'll be Oklahoma State and Texas in the Big 12 title game. I thought it was a real gut check for OSU. After what happened last week down at UCF and getting blown out in that game, to fall behind the way they did down there at Houston, you know Dana was fired up and had his guys fired up to try to win that game. And for them to just kind of settle in, not abandon Ollie Gordon, continue kind of the process of what makes them good, and then the way they played in the second half, I thought it was a real gut check and a real strong performance for, for Gundy's guys. Right, complimentary football is – you took the words out of my mouth. Because I thought Gordon would get back on track, and he did. I thought Bowman – you know, I said this back in the Bedlam game. He's the key, and if he can have a good game, this team is really, really good, and he was great. You know, outside of the pick six to start the game, he made some throws that were really, really good. So – yeah, it was uh, when you got the passing balanced out with the uh, with the rushing, like they did. That's that's hard to stop, uh, to the tune of forty three points. That's incredibly hard to stop. That was a good good bounce back game for for OSU. Yeah, and they, I think even defensively they kind of settled in. You saw the, first, the the long pass early for the touchdown, the sixty yarder for Houston, um, and, and that's been a problem for Oklahoma State, letting guys behind them, and that kind of was it. Yeah, I mean as far as they just thought, oh man, how many times we're we going to see this, like we did a week ago, and and we didn't. And the next thing you know, we come up with two interceptions on defense for the for the Cowboys. It just was a really, really strong performance to not to not let those kind of doubts and the ghosts from last week creep into your mind in the middle of that second quarter when things were not going Oklahoma State's way, and it looked like Houston was going to. Be the spoiler. I mean, for a mm-hmm. bunch of that half, it was like, uh oh, you know, it's twenty three. The safety happens. You're down two touchdowns, and then that's when the you know Oklahoma State gets the interception, scores a touchdown, and a field goal to cut into that lead all the way down to twenty three uh, to sixteen at halftime. Instead of you know, it just even even a block extra point when you score, thinking you're going to get back to one, you know, down seven. Yeah. Even like silly stuff like that. There's just silly stuff happened in that first half, and it could have been a huge detriment. And instead, Oklahoma State um, defensively was really, really strong in the second half, and and they came out with win. And now, like I said, this team is just kind of done what they've had to do to put themselves in the position that they're in now, and that is with a chance to uh, to go play Texas in the Big 12 title game with a win this week at home against that same BYU team we just saw the Sooners play. So good stuff uh, there for the in-state schools around the country. Man, where are the upsets? Where are the big, earth-moving, playoff-changing upsets? We might have had one, and we talked about this early, we might have had one in Tallahassee without – the upset you know that i thought even even uh i had an eye on that score after the injury to to travis so but they 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 did what they should have done as win but what does that mean moving forward for the committee and their thoughts about florida state and he's done right he, oh, he broke his leg he, yeah. yeah he's done so that's that's a conundrum because why punish a team because one guy is out when they're still undefeated you know if they go and and, and win the ACC, and they're undefeated there, and they got to talk about this. What do you do? I mean, at the Swamp. Put a one-loss team in over a, a superstarless quarterback undefeated team? Here's the deal. They have two chances to show that this injury isn't as big a deal as most people would assume, right? Go to Florida this week. If they can, if they can, and then play uh, Louisville in the ACC title game, those are two chances to prove your medal and to prove that you still belong. Because I, I don't think the committee wants any part of keeping an undefeated Power Five conference champ out of there. 
But if you go in, if you struggle around and are like clearly not the same team, yeah. Even if you even if you eke out wins, if you're clearly not the same team, that's all the ammo they need to be able to say, I, I understand that you're twelve and zero, but you're not the same team in the last two as you were in the first ten. You're just not. And we've seen precedent, at least in the basketball tournament, of this happening where. Seating has been affected big time by massive injuries that have happened, you know, in conference t- tournaments or what have you. I, I mean, I get the sense that if they, I get the sense that they won't make it unless they come out and really, really dominate at Florida and then in that ACC title game. Yeah. I mean, if they look like a little bit of a shell of themselves with the different quarterback in there, I just get the sense that that's enough. Especially if if some of these other things happen with, say, Alabama beating Georgia. I mean, the, Florida State needs to be the biggest Georgia fans of all time over these next couple of weeks. Because who can't see that happening? Yeah. Let's see, Travis's replacement was Roadmaker, Tate Roadmaker. And I was looking him up. He was a three-star guy. I thought maybe he he was a high recruit guy, just wait, kind of like a Jackson Arnold, waiting for his his next man up, his turn to play. Just a three-star guy. So, yeah, I'm with you. Any any signs of flaws in the committee might might give pause on putting them in. Yeah, he had only thrown eight passes until Saturday. Now he has had a little experience. He Travis got when Jordan Travis got hurt last year, he came in and won a game at Louisville. But yeah, it's a it's pretty interesting. You know, this this happened in the first year of the playoff. But you know what we you know what happened then? Cardell Jones lit it up for Ohio State. And it was enough to put him in the – and, heck, they end up winning the national title behind yeah. the third quarterback, Cardell yeah. Jones. Yeah. So, I mean, there is that possibility that if yeah. if Roadmaker just eviscerates Florida and, and Louisville, yeah. proves their worth. It's not over for him by any stretch. All right, we'll be back. Hi, everybody. This is David Osterloh. Many of you know me because I ran a retail business in Elk City for over 30 years. That's where I learned that if you take care of your customers, they will take care of you. So when it was time to look for a career in real estate, I wanted to land someplace that had the same principles. Western Oklahoma Realty seemed like a natural fit. Putting people before property is the same as taking care of your customers. Since I've been at Western Oklahoma Realty, I've come to understand that is how they do business. People before property is not just a hashtag, it's a way of taking care of customers. When you are looking for your next home, we will find a place that your family can call home. When you are going to sell your current home, we will find a buyer that loves your place as much as you do. Western Oklahoma Realty, where putting people before property is a way of life. Come see us at 602 West 3rd Street. We are in the historic greenhouse on the hill, one block west of Homeland. Or you can check out our website, westernoklahomarealty.com, or even call us at 580-225-6271. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. The Skinny on Sports. Welcome back, Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal, wrapping it up here on a Monday morning with a little thunder. A little thunder. Heard a little thunder Saturday night. A little thunder. Yeah, Saturday night. Chet saved the day. Buzzer beating three to send it to overtime, which then SGA took over in the over- overtime. Those guys were both just fantastic. Chet with his first 30 point outing of his career. He had, what, 36? SGA with 40. And Oklahoma City wins 130 to 123 in overtime. Second straight win over the Warriors last week, which means. Now they own, in case of a tiebreak later on down the line, that's the last game that they're going to play against the Warriors this season. So they own the season series 2-1 over uh, Golden State, which will be maybe beneficial for playoff seating or keep yourself out of a play-in or whatever situation might occur later on down the line. But uh, no doubt, not only – it was a good time to play the Warriors all the way around, right? Yeah. Yeah. You'd rather play them right now, they're scuffling. You'd rather play them now than later on in the season. So you got all three out of the way before December. 
and you know the Warriors are just kind of that type of team, that older type of team that maybe struggles around early, but they figure it out later. You don't want to see them in February or March, and the Thunder don't have to now. And they were able to take advantage of Draymond being out. Uh, obviously, Steph being out for the first game on Thursday. He played on Saturday. But, man, 36 from Chet on 14 of 22 shooting, 40 from SGA and 18 of 29. I mean, efficient and a great win, a great comeback win for OKC Saturday. Yeah, that's that's cool. And you wonder if that's the coming out party for Chet for that shot. He looks so confident, too, taking it and his reaction and everything. And then the way you know you you would, I was worried of a letdown game at Portland yesterday, <laughs> and hardly that, hardly that. The the and Isaiah Joe, holy moly! Yeah, I was just counting that up. Dude can shoot. He's on a on a heater right now. So nine of eleven from three in the two games at Golden State, and then last night he was what five of five, five of six. So nine. That's fourteen. 14 of the last 17 from deep <laughs> in three in three wins. Uh, Oklahoma City was incredible again last night, 134 to 91. I mean, I think they led by as many as 47 at one point against the – listen, Portland's not any good, but you're at, off the back-to-back, off of two wins and three nights against the Warriors to go to Portland and do what they did last night was, was awesome. Chet was perfect, 6 of 6, SGA 10 of 13. You know, those guys got – Way less minutes that they were than they did play on Saturday. You know, the most was twenty three, and and we we're able to to kind of get some rest there in the second half after OKC just blitzed Portland to the tune of seventy six to forty three at halftime. And you know, Jim said it the other day. I know he's kind of being tongue in cheek because right now the Thunder are better than a lot of people thought they were going to be. But he twenty two of thirty six from behind the arc last night. I mean, that's that's an impossible standard to keep at 61 percent shooting threes but the thunder are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the in the league so far and if that continues this team is going to have a real shot to make a difference in the playoffs not just make the playoffs if they shoot like that continue to shoot like that they're going to be a team that's going to be hard to put out Mm -hmm. you would think yeah but we also saw this with the kings a lot last year you know, they were the fun team in the regular season, won a bunch of games, scored a bunch of points, and then bowed out in the first round because playoff basketball is different than regular season basketball. And this is a team that doesn't ha- doesn't really have any experience with that per se. If that were the case, if this is just a really fun team to watch, let's say they finish third in the West and lose in the first round, does anybody really care? Because that sure seems like they're still – Way ahead of schedule. If they're third mm-hmm. in the West, that I would almost ex- I would hope that if they're third in the West, they're good enough to win at least the first round. If they were a little lower than that and, and not have home court and all that stuff, yeah. But let's say they play. Let's say the first round is kind of like it was last year, and they play the Suns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is anybody favoring them in a playoff or, series against Phoenix? Right, no. You know what not. I'm saying? Yeah. It's just or Clippers, maybe Clippers or Lakers or figure it out with Harden. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, because you can see them floundering around. And that's right. You know, Golden State was kind of like, well, it doesn't matter what seed we're at or Lakers. Are, let's just get in the playoffs and then we'll make noise. Then we'll turn it on. Yeah, I can see what you're saying, but I'm with you. I mean, yeah, it's it, are they ahead of schedule if they make the? Is that what you're saying? If they make the playoffs as a three seed, yeah, way ahead of schedule than what we thought. And and be. you kind of go, God, that kind of. I mean, but on the other hand, once you would, get there, of course, you're going to want to win. Well, but yeah, but when you like take stock at the season and you go, all right, so we went from, you know, the two years in the abyss, waiting on Chet, waiting on you know everybody to grow up. Last year, you're in the play in, you win a game, but don't quite make it to the playoffs, and then you jump up to the third seed. I mean that 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 track that was that's way even if you lose that first round, which you wouldn't want to. But I'm just saying if that's the way it plays out, if you play out exactly like the Kings did a year ago, the disappointment would be there with losing the playoff series. But I think as a whole, you'd look and go, man, this team is on a track for really really good stuff. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, like last year, I was just happy they got where they got. I, I, the results were like, the, whatever happens is a bonus. That, that's kind of know? what I mean. If yeah. if they end up, I mean, the third seed is a, it's a, I mean, it's high, and this may not continue, but even then, I mean, I think you have to just kind of shake it off and go, golly, yeah, it stinks, but where is this team headed? And now all of a sudden, you look up. They're second in the West, just a, a a loss behind Minnesota to to be at the top. And you know what else they are? Mm. Now, last night helps this a ton with only a 14-game sample, but they're by leaps and bounds the best team in point differential in the West. The next, they're at plus 8.8, and the closest is Minnesota at plus 6.1. They've won five straight, 10 and four. They've got the best road record in in basketball. At six and one, that's that's a lot of really heady stuff for a team that's just, that's already that's still this young. Yeah, and a little bit. It's like I'm I'm here thinking we we knew they they had the opportunity to be really good or not really good, but better than what they were last year. So I but like barely right. I mean, yeah, not like, a yeah, ton. They should be better, right? They, they, sure, they should be better. They're they're experienced. They get Chet. We we had expectations for Chet to add to this team, and he has. I would say he has. So that that is um. So I guess right now I'm kind of like oh, this is nice. It's still it's still November. <laughs> I'm not trying to throw water on the flames here, but this there's going to be ups and downs of his season. How do they how do they survive the downs? How do they react to the downs? Can they get out of it, or can they keep this going? It's been great. It's fun. I can't wait to um. You know, let's get to Christmas, and then let's get. Let's move on down and get to the all-star break. Let's see where we're at. Let's take this one step at a time. But mm-hmm. right now, this is a great start. They're still young. Let's see how they, they how they um, respond to adversity. But a great sign of it was at Golden State on Saturday and how they won that game. You know, I, I mentioned there's games like OU. They lose last year, but they win in this year. Kind of same thing with going or with uh, Oklahoma City. That's a game maybe they can't pull out on the road, especially in San Francisco. Well, then they turn around and they, they do that. And big reason of that was because they got a guy named Chet Holmgren on the team now. And obviously SGA. I mean, well, he just he's gets always better and better. Give, he, if he keeps, yeah. He, you know, he's just that you. guy that you almost take him for granted sometimes because he's so good and well, he's so consistent. that's kind of what I was talking about was Wimby versus Chet. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, no one's even talking about this other guy named SGA on the team, right? I mean, this is the guy that's – that's on his way to being a, a, a starter in the All Star game. So, and here here's the truth: you, you look at the the biggest weakness is rebounding, and it's not even close. The games where Oklahoma City kind of holds their own, they don't even have to out rebound somebody. Last night they did, and look what they did: they won by fifty. <laughs> when they, I mean, here you know Portland didn't have a whole bunch of misses to try to rebound, so that obviously helps, you know. But if Oklahoma City wins the rebounding battle by twelve. Like they did last night, forty-three to thirty-one, they're going to win every game because that's the one weakness of this team, glaring weakness. And what that does is leads to the other team getting so many more possessions and so many more opportunities. It's hard to it's hard to be efficient enough and score enough when you're giving up, you know, fifteen possessions, like has happened in some of these games. They've won a couple of them, but it's just because they shot the ball so incredibly well, and they've. They've been doing that. I mean, it, at some point, the making shots isn't luck. I mean, at some point, they've just improved. Yeah. Now, is Lou Dort a 50% three-point shooter? No. So that's going to regress a little bit to the mean, but that doesn't mean he hasn't improved. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, it, no, yeah. In him making 46% so far on the season, that number does that, that number could be 38, and he's a heck of a player. Because of what he does on the other end, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's and, and maybe maybe that's another thing we kind of take a little bit for granted is how much guys can improve at this young age. I mean, think about how young everybody still is, and there's going to be incremental improvement just by guys getting a little bit older, a little bit closer to their primes. And we're still that's what's kind of scary. I think if you look around the league, looking at Oklahoma City, we're Couple of years from Shea's prime, much less everybody else that's younger right. than him. Yeah, this is uh, just a mirror image of the first generation of this. It, with except, you know what's even better? 
is it feels like the core if you if you say the core pieces are J Dub, Shay, and Holmgren. Yeah. They fit seamlessly together. Whereas the first one, if it was Russ, KD, and Harden, they all kind of needed the ball. It's fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right, everybody have a great Monday. We'll be back tomorrow right here on the Skinny on Sports on the Sports Animal. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way back goodbye. We were sitting around the office one day and tried to explain what Western Oklahoma Realty was. If you had to put it in a dictionary, what would you get? What kind of definition you get? I think I said, is a, what about, were people before property? People before property means to me that you care about the person more than you care about what they're buying in that you want them to get the best thing for their circumstances, the best home, the best investment. For all your real estate needs, give Western Oklahoma Realty a call at 225-6271.